What if the thousands of people in need of an organ transplant no longer had to wait? This is so cool. How long have you been on the list? It'll be seven months, November 4th. Imagine a future in which your heart, lungs, or kidney is failing, and within a few weeks, you could get a brand new one. In this week's episode of Moving Upstream, we meet a scientist working to make this dream a reality. Jackie Castro's the kind of patient that scientists are fighting for. I'm not 100% confident that I'm gonna get lungs in time, you know? Right now I'm at 17% lung function. At this point, you can't live without the oxygen. No, I can't, no, I'm on this 24 hours. I sleep with it, I shower with it. I mean, I can take it off to like switch hoses and stuff, but no, I can't, I can't live without it. She can't live with it that much longer either. Okay. Castro uses six liters of oxygen a minute. They allow her short dog walks and a visit to the hospital. The rest of the time, Castro is attached to a 50-foot cord that feeds her oxygen. Yeah, she has a lot of energy. More than usual, I feel. Yeah. Ooh, mama, throw it. What's mommy got? Mama, huh? throw it. Oh. Those days where I exert myself too much and the oxygen's not high enough and I can't get enough breath, you start to panic very quickly. Jackie is a 36-year-old nurse who lives just outside of Boston with her husband, Joe Anderson. They met through a mutual friend seven years ago. Recognize that newly married couple. And were married in 2013. Jackie is one of more than 116,000 Americans on the National Transplant Waiting List. She's had tough luck with her health. She was diagnosed with cancer at 19 and has been in remission for 15 years. A year ago, she was diagnosed with pulmonary fibrosis, a lung disease likely caused by the chemotherapy. That's when she found out she needed a lung transplant. They said 39 days was the average but I've been on it for almost seven months. I have an abnormally small chest cavity, even for my size. So they're having a hard time finding lungs that will fit inside of me. Castro's case is representative of what many experts call the donor matching problem. While organs are available for transplant, donor blood types and body sizes often don't match with the recipients waiting in line. Another American is added to the wait list every 10 minutes, and 20 Americans die every day waiting for a transplant. You know, it's hard because, you know, I can't work. Um, my husband's out of work because he's taking my full-time caregiver. We both like to work to wake up with a purpose and um, help other people. So it's hard to, to just be waiting and waiting. And As Jackie waits, Researchers across the globe are working to solve the donor matching problem. Here at Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston, Dr. Harold Ott and his team are trying to literally grow hope. One of the two big frontiers in medicine is to come up with solutions for cancer and to come up with solutions for the end organ failure epidemic that we have. In the last 30 years, the number of Americans receiving organ transplants has nearly tripled. Major advancements in regenerative medicine are being made. In October, a double lung recipient in Cleveland began performing opera again. But no matter how amazing the surgeons get, the availability of suitable organs is a chronic problem. That opera singer rejected her first lung transplant. Dr. Ott is one of the many researchers who's building upon recent discoveries of how to transform stem cells into any type of cell. We're now able to make stem cells from your own cells. 
we are able to drive them through development, basically, and try to use them as building blocks to rebuild a heart or a lung for transplantation. Your iPhone breaks, your battery breaks, you, you switch it out. Medicine, in some ways, is possibly moving in that direction, where at some point, if, if your part is damaged, we can replace it. Odd estimates his research won't be ready for a clinical application on humans for at least a decade. In spite of this timeline, Ott has made progress with the pig and rat lungs and hearts he uses. His method involves three steps. First, he takes a donor organ and decellularizes it by hooking it up to a pump that washes off all the cells that made the organ unique to the donor. This is like a clean slate in some ways. It's a scaffold or an architecture that's perfect and can provide the backbone for cells to function and in the end help to treat patients like Jackie. Next, Ott uses a recipient's stem cells. He grows them into the kind of cells the organ will need to be compatible. Finally, Ott adds these cells to the donor organ and hooks it up to a bioreactor. It stimulates the organ by pumping it and making it expand and retract like a working heart or lung. And I could measure you up, basically, and take a, uh, an organ off the shelf and ideally make it personalized so that you wouldn't reject it and I would implant it into you. No rejection. That's right. That's the long-term hope. No rejection, no immunosuppression, and no donor organ shortage. Hi, Dad. Hi, Mom. Hi, Sloney Baloney. Can you say hello? Jackie's parents are coming over to watch their German shepherd, Sloan, as she and her husband head to her lung doctor. Over the last seven months, Joe has had to take a leave of absence from his job as a bricklayer and has become Jackie's primary caregiver. The couple rely on a combination of insurance from the Affordable Care Act and private insurance from Jackie's former employer to keep up with her medical costs. So this is where my beautiful wife grew up, is Charlestown. Right? <laughs> Best town ever. Only someone from Charlestown would say that. <clears throat> Like I said, it's definitely been an eye-opening experience. I'm just grateful that I can do this for her. It's all about her. Every day, every second needs to be about her. You know, how can I make her life easy? Can I get her oxygen tank? Can I make the bed and not ask for help? Can I do the laundry? Can I do this? She has so much on her plate in her mind that anything I can do to make her day easier makes me happy. There's nothing that he could do better than what he does. I'm extremely thankful. I thank God for him every day. After they arrive, Joe pushes Jackie into the exam room of her cardiac surgeon. Thank you. The one who's hoping to operate on her soon. Okay, uh, just take a deep yeah. breath, please, in and out. Because lung transplants often come from donors that aren't perfect matches, the five-year survival rate for lung transplants is around 50%. Jackie's doctor says she won't make it much longer than six months unless she gets a new set of lungs. If, you know, it's not in God's plan for me to get this transplant, then I just have to trust that, you know, that something good will come out of all of this. And so, yeah. does that answer the question? It's the best I can answer it, I guess. Yeah, I mean, you're going you're gonna to see this, the little alveoli filling with air on that lung as it, as it ventilates. If you stay on it, you'll see it in the next breath. That is so cool. Well, Dr. Ott's efforts won't be ready in time for Jackie, he's made significant progress since he began working on the project in 2004. So have you had in the lab any moment when the team's giving one another high fives and was like, yes, we did it. I think the first heartbeats that we saw in one of, in, on that rat scaffold were certainly one of those moments. You get people around you to believe in it, and everybody works hard and late nights to try to make it happen. And when we saw those first heartbeats, I think that was really one of those breakthrough moments where we said, uh, well, this actually has legs. In spite of this breakthrough, there's still major hurdles to overcome. So we have transplanted lungs into large animals and saw them function for hours after implantation. Only hours. Only hours. It has to work very well, it has to be safe, and that process just takes time.
So I have to have my phone on, the ringer on at all times. My phone's a primary, Joe's is a backup, and they have my dad's number too. When, if, Jackie receives a call that an organ match is ready for her, she'll have three hours to get to the hospital for surgery. My bag's already packed, it's already in the car. When we go to bed at night, we just make sure our ring is on, and we just wait for the phone call. Thanks for watching this episode of Moving Upstream. I'm Jason Bellini. Hope you'll leave some comments for us, send us an email, and watch our upcoming episodes.